All right. Hi, everybody. We're here this afternoon with Eve Hoffman from Loyola University in Chicago. Uh, Loyola University is a very popular option for a lot of SLU High students. A Jesuit university located kind of that sweet spot away for us at five hours away. A beautiful campus. A year ago this summer, many of us at SLU High were up on Loyola's campus for a Jesuit high school event. And we stayed in the residence halls that were like staying in a resort. It was beautiful. And just the campus itself, the Jesuit values very present. However, it's like SLU High, but way bigger. And so, <laughs> uh, so it's not like SLU High, it's college. And so Eve's gonna share with us, I'm gonna start off just by asking Eve, uh, to give us just a 20,000 foot overview of Loyola University, kind of its distinctive features that SLU High students would want to know about. Absolutely. Well, for starters, you're right. It is definitely similar to SLU High in that it has those Jesuit principles, although it is a co-ed institution. So that is a major difference right there. Um, <laughs> um, so just in terms of the most broad sense of the word, the way that I define Loyola for students, obviously, is that private Jesuit um, part of the identity. We are also as the name suggests, an urban institution. We're located in the city of Chicago, up on the north side. Um, and you know, if you've been to Chicago before, you probably know there's the, the downtown area where that skyscraper district is and the loop where all the train lines converge. Um, we have access to that and we actually have a small satellite campus down there, but our main campus is up on the north side of the city. So you get the access to all the fun Chicago stuff, but then you also get a traditional college campus out of the deal too. So it's for many, the best of both worlds. It was for me when I was a student. Um, and we're also a mid-sized institution. We've got about 12,000 undergrad. So kind of a not too big, not too small, Goldilocks situation for a lot of people. Um, as an alum myself, I can speak from experience here. You're gonna get to know hundreds, if not thousands of people, at least, you know, in terms of passing them on, you know, on the street or on our sidewalks and recognizing those faces, whether it's from your Spanish class or your residence hall floor um, or the intramural volleyball league that you join, it, it, it is an accessible number. Um, and so it, for, for a lot of personalities, it's, it's a really great sweet spot because you feel like you're never running out of people to meet but you also aren't drowning in a sea of unknown faces all the time. Kind of the best of both worlds. Um, in terms of academics, we are particularly well known for health sciences. Um, our School of Business currently is ranked number one in Chicago for undergraduate business programs, which is very exciting. Um, environmental science and policy programs. Uh, we have a new engineering, uh, or rather relatively new engineering school, which has uh, just recently been ABED accredited. Um, and also our, our most popular and uh, well-known humanities programs are in our history and political, psych de uh, political science departments, excuse me. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of a mixed bag in terms of academics, but there's about 80 different majors to choose from. Um, you know, we wouldn't offer it if we weren't good at it. So there's a lot of things to look into. Um, and many students do seek out multiple academic tracks. So that could mean for you maybe double majoring or potentially getting a minor or two if your major is a little bit more rigorous. Um, but we want you to be well-rounded. That's part of that Jesuit identity. We want you to have a holistic education and be, you know, the jack of all trades, the Renaissance man by the time that you leave us, if you aren't already. Um, and also, you know, of course, caring for the whole person and being compassionate, um, you know, adults for others. And you know that from your, from your Jesuit education now that we, we want you to be, in your case, men for others. Of course, our, our mission is men and women for others because we are a co-ed school. Um, right now, about 90% of Loyola's undergraduate students do some sort of service work before they graduate or volunteering. Um, and it is not a required component of our education. And so that does mean, you know, that 90% of, of our 12,000 students do that voluntarily without it being a required component of their education. So it is a school that, that raises compassion and empathy in, in our students. Um, Elaine, am I missing anything in particular that you'd like to know about? I'm going to ask you, um, what about new or distinctive programs? Um, okay. So I did just briefly touch on this already. Our engineering school um, has, has three distinct 
engineering concentration majors, biomedical, computer, and environmental engineering. Um, the school has been around for about five years now um, and has been going through the ABET accreditation process, which is the engineering accreditation process for that whole time. Um, and because we've had multiple graduating classes now, we were officially eligible. And so, in fact, probably just a month or so ago now, we got that official accreditation notice. And so, if you are seeking out engineering, you know, we are a great option there for those three programs. Um, in other news, uh, last year we opened up the Parkinson School of Health Sciences and Public Health at Loyola. So um, if you have a perhaps rising interest in public health today, as the, uh, you know, the pandemic has certainly made this, you know, a, a national conversation, um, if that is, you know, something of interest to you, epidemiology and, and prevention and overall community treatment. Um, that is a new major for Loyola within that Parkinson School. And we also moved over a few existing majors, healthcare administration and exercise science into that school as well. So that is definitely a very rising interest among you know, men and women your age, uh, particularly this year, but even in years past, it was a very rising interest. And so one that we're expecting to see a lot of new students joining. Um, I think that covers it for our newest majors. We do have some new minors in the mix, creative writing, musical theater, et cetera. Um, but of course, that's something that you can definitely establish during your time here. You don't have to decide on your majors today by any means. Um, a follow-up question, because it seems like the, public, the School of Public Health um, would be a wonderful uh, pre-med undergraduate major. What about a medical school advising for undergraduate students? So we have, we call it pre-health advising because it incorporates pre-medicine, pre-occupational therapy, physical therapy, dentistry, any of those health science fields that have a professional school requirement. Uh, Pre-med, of course, being the largest cohort of those students. Um, for us, and as it is for most undergraduate schools, it is not a major. So you are selecting something from that long list of 80 different programs, whether it's public health or biology or accounting or philosophy, you, your pick, dealers choice, but we'll make sure that along those four years you're taking prerequisite requirements that medical schools need to see from you. So whether you're a science major or not, you'll get those done. Um, also our pre-med and just generally our pre-health advising does a lot of mentorship programs to pair you up with current med students at Loyola's Strict School of Medicine as well as doctors in Chicagoland so that you can shadow them and have one-on-one -on -one conversations regularly throughout your four years to strategize as to what kind of medicine works best for you, what sort of school you might be, you know, would flourish at because of your current academic interests and abilities. Um, they also help with MCAT prep, they do resume reviews, mock interviews, the list goes on. So it's a very all-encompassing, you know, step-by-step -step process. Um, currently, if you're looking at statistics for our seniors that have gone through those four years in that pre-health advising, um, right now about 75, 76% of our seniors are admitted to at least one medical school during senior year. If you also included the admission cycle after you've graduated, so like two admission cycles total, we're looking at about 80 to 85% acceptance rate into medical schools across the US. So we're doing okay for ourselves to say the least. That's National good. average is in the 40%, 45% range currently. So um, obviously that's a testament to the caliber of student at Loyola more than anything else, but having those resources in place is definitely advantageous. Service and the opportunities for service and research. Uh, what about uh, scholarships? I know we've had several SLU High students who have received some of your top scholarships. Uh, are those so. automatically awarded? The application process, is that changing this year? Um, could we go over that? Yeah, okay. So the main scholarships that we distribute um, are merit-based awards, meaning looking at your high school academic performance, whether that's GPA or class rank, if some schools compute it. I know that you guys don't put that on your transcripts, so you can disregard that variable, but overall weighted GPA, um, and standardized testing has historically been one of those variables. Of course, this year, not every student has been able to sit in on an ACT or an SAT. So for Loyola's undergraduate admission and scholarship review process this year, we are test optional. There are two exceptions to the rule, and that is for students applying to our engineering science programs and our nursing major. Um, for, those, for those fields, 
it is a more rigorous application process because we have a more limited amount of seats than our other majors and so we want as many data points as we can have um, so for those students we are not test optional but for everyone else we are meaning that if you're applying to Loyola's you know um, English major and you have taken a standardized test but don't like that score or haven't had a chance to get into a testing center we're still going to review you for admission and for those merit-based awards for that merit-based award process we'll look a little bit more heavily at your transcript content if you choose not to send in test scores to us um, so to get back to your original actual question um, so this past year our merit-based scholarships were awarded to about 80 percent of our applicants meaning not competitive um, they're just evaluating you as an individual um, on kind of an algorithmic uh, algorithmic scale. That's a tongue twister. Um, and they ranged uh, for this current group of freshmen uh, from $17,000 to $25,000 per year, which for the tuition number alone cuts it down on average by half. Um, if you're looking at our total cost of attendance, it's usually in the ballpark of 30 to 40% of that total cost, um, you know, room and board fees, tuition. So um, they're useful. Keep working hard, folks. Um, you know, those, those numbers that you're getting, those objective academic numbers can definitely positively impact that financial aid package. That merit-based scholarship, if you are getting it, will come back in your acceptance letter to the university. So you will know about it during the fall of your senior year. Also, every single one of you, assuming that you're graduating from SLU High, will receive a small $2,500 scholarship that we call a Jesuit Heritage Award just for having gone to a Jesuit high school. Um, and that is not competitive. Every single one of you would receive that. So that's stacking on top of that initial merit-based scholarship. So from there, these are just the automatic ones you know about in your acceptance letter in the fall. There's also co some competitive scholarships that have separate applications, a separate essay criteria. Um, and we know who is eligible to apply to those competitive awards because they're based off of the major that you choose or some other demographic info, leadership involvement, other academic criteria. We will know if you're eligible to apply and we will send you the application for that competitive scholarship in January, meaning that you will have heard back about that initial merit-based award and then you'll start the competitive scholarship process after. So um, there's quite a few um, different scholarships that you as a student might be eligible for. One comes to mind is also related to attending a Jesuit high school. Um, called the Jesuit Leadership Award. And if I'm recalling correctly, it is an additional $5,000 per year scholarship, um, which we awarded to, I think, 15 to 20 students this past year. I'm forgetting the exact number, but I think it was in that ballpark. Um, and, and they were attending Jesuit high schools across the nation. So it is a competitive award. Obviously, there's a lot of Jesuit high schools across the US, but not so many that you don't stand a chance. Um, so that's definitely something that'll be available to all of you. And then there might be a, a few others depending on what major you choose or other academics. That's a lot of info, um, but we do take competitive scholarships from other you know, external sites, so look into those. There might be departmental scholarships and grants and fellowships you can apply to while you're at Loyola, but those are a down the line thing once you've taken Loyola classes. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge a little bit later. Uh, does that answer your question, Elaine? Is there it any does. follow up? It does, it does. I know for students, a lot of times, when you get your acceptance letter then it has your merit award in it sometimes you think that that is your financial aid package but it's it's only one component your fat when your parents file fafsa and you file your component of the fafsa there can be institutional grant on top of that that would come later on um, in the second semester so it's kind of exactly. a one two a one two package but make sure exactly. we'll talk more about fafsa with our students and parents as we go. Okay. Um, what about my last question before I open it up to the students is can students visit campus um, and take a campus tour? How is that? How is that going at Loyola right now? So currently, and I, I explicitly requested that you ask me this question because I want it on the record so you all can refer back to this down the line. Um, currently, residents of Missouri this is not a Loyola specific thing, but currently residents of Missouri are required to quarantine if they come to Chicago for 14 days. So that means that while we're not gonna boot you off of campus, technically you're not supposed to be on campus. So um, we don't have guided tours going on right now for anyone, regardless of what their home address is. Um, but for right now, what I say to, to families from St. Louis is, 
do as many of the virtual visit options as are available to you. We have virtual tours, one-on-one -on -one appointments with me or another counselor, info sessions that are, you know, kind of broad reaching, talking about study abroad and student life and all that good stuff. Um, get as many of those things as you possibly can on your schedule first and foremost. And then uh, I would encourage you to postpone that on-campus visit until you know, hopefully those restrictions have been lifted. Again, we're not gonna kick you out the door. You're welcome to walk around the campus if you do come, but in terms of Chicago guidance, you are technically supposed to be quarantined. So, you know, do as you will, but <laughs> um, you will not be getting a guided tour if you come to campus right now. So that is worth noting. Okay, um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to pause our recording. Uh...